<laughs> Winter is upon us. What's up guys, Brian Hikes all day here. Today I wanted to talk to you about my winter layering system. I wanted to teach you all the tips and tricks that I've learned through my last few years of winter hiking in the high peaks and all the other mountains that aren't even high peaks. But uh, I'm gonna break it down for you what I wear from top to bottom. And I also wanted to teach you all the tips and tricks that I've learned that's just gonna help your winter sense be more comfortable, more dry and just better all around. So uh, stick around. All right, so I'm gonna start by breaking down my gear and my layering, and then I'll go into pretty much everything I could possibly think of that's gonna help you guys. All right, so um, let's start at the boots. Um, I use the Oboe Bridgers. Um, no particular reason why I bought this other than they are an insulated winter hiking boot and they are extremely comfortable. They fit my foot really well. They got a wide toe box, and I've really loved these right from the start. They're super durable and robust. They got really hard rubber kick plates all over them. Um, so pretty much wearing them out by hitting rocks, it, d it just doesn't happen. This is my third winter season in them and they're, they're honestly flawless. And they keep my feet super warm. Now, another tip that I learned about keeping your feet super warm in the winter, don't tighten your shoelaces too tight. I like to leave them pretty loose, like almost to the point where I could practically slip out of it like a slipper. Why? Because when you tighten your shoelaces too tight, you compress all the veins in your feet and then you lose blood flow to your toes. Your toes will get freezing and you'll be uncomfortable and you won't be able to go on. So loose boots in the winter is really, really the best tip I can give you about keeping your feet warm. I've been a negative 50 in 200 grams of insulation in those boots. Um, right Algonquin Iroquois, which you're up on the open ridge for a few hours. It was negative 50 and my feet stayed warm the entire time and comfortable and you know I really I really give that to mainly having the loose boots and keeping the blood flow in the feet going really good. Okay, so um, sock choices. Um, Darn Tough. Now Darn Tough has a summer sock and they also have a winter sock. I don't know if you can see the difference. The winter sock is two or three times as thick. Um, depending on the temperature outside really depends on how I'm gonna layer, what I'm gonna do. If it's, if it's not really gonna be below zero, I'll use my summer sock because my feet are just gonna be sweating if they're any warmer. Usually zero and below, I'll wear the winter sock. Um, definitely added, added warmth, okay? Always keep an extra pair of socks in your bag too because uh, if you're on a really long day and your feet start to get really sweaty and wet, they might start to blister and you'll be uncomfortable. So, all right, that's the socks. Got the boots, the socks. I use wool long underwear. Um, that's, that's my base layer for my legs. I think that works really well. I mean, whatever base layer works for you, polyester or wool, 99% of all my layering is polyester. I really love synthetic materials. I think they breathe really well. They keep me really warm and uh, they dry in like 20 minutes. So, so I got the socks, I got the under, I got the under armor on the legs. Now, I, I feel like a lot of people may not necessarily agree with this at all. I feel like my layering system has always been a little different than everybody else, but it works so flawlessly for me, I just won't change it. I wear insulated snow pants. Um, these are by North Face. These are North Face Freedom insulated snow pants. Um, the reason why I like insulated snow pants is because they keep my legs so unbelievably warm. Um, but I know a lot of you are thinking, I can't handle that, my legs are gonna start sweating, but this is the thing. When I could layer my legs really warm, I could wear practically nothing up top and be comfortable. And if I'm really lightly layered up top, I'm not gonna sweat as much. Um, a lot of the snow pants, I don't know how hiking snow pants are, but I use, these are like snowboarding pants. They have vents, they have big vents in the thighs and everything so that you could air out. You know, I'll, I'll even open up the fly to air out, you know, everything that I could possibly air out if I get warm. But 99% of the time, I'm really comfortable and I don't even think I sweat too much. Me and Brittany both wear the same insulated pants. We both wear the same layering system and it works flawless for both of us. Our legs are always warm and comfortable. Now, the other reason why I like insulated snow pants is it keeps the warm air in, but it also keeps the cold air out. So basically, when you're butt sliding, when you're getting snow all over yourself, it's not going to melt. It's not going to melt and soak your clothing because there is that barrier of insulation. So the snow will stay snowy. The warmth will stay inside. It won't start melting. You won't get wet. And uh, that, you know, that always worked really well for me. Now, layering up top. Majority of the time, I can get away with just a simple single base layer. You know, I could pretty much climb in a single base layer with my bottom end really warm. Um, the base layer, 
basically what I'm trying to say is um, to hike as cold as you comfortably can. Um, that is definitely one of the key tips that I've learned is to hike as cold as you comfortably can because um, it's going to keep you drier. You obviously don't want to overheat. Overheating in the winter is, is the enemy. Uh, sweat kills. Um, another thing for layering, cotton kills. Um, I know a lot of you probably know that, but some of you might not. Never ever wear cotton in the winter. Once cotton gets wet, it doesn't dry out. If you get cold, you're going to freeze. Straight up, you're just going to freeze. Avoid cotton at all costs. I personally love polyester. A lot of people love wool. It's really all personal preference. Layering in general is personal preference. Um, everybody is a very unique individual. Everything that works for me not, might not work for you, but a lot of the tips that you know I'm going to give you are going to help. So another tip that just popped into my mind, starting at the car. Some people like to start really warm, bundled up because they're not moving, they're cold. That's the wrong way to go, guys. Because five minutes after you start walking, you're going to be overheating and you're going to be sweating. And that's not good. You don't want to sweat, especially not from the beginning. The key to staying dry is starting at the car freezing. I start in very minimal layers. I literally am practically shivering freezing and I just start boogieing right from the start. You want to warm up as you start to go. You don't want to just start warm and then just start sweating right away. You want to start cold and warm up into a comfortable um, condition. Now, I'm not going to start straight up in like a basic Under Armour because that would be just too cold to handle. So I'll usually wear my base layer and I'll wear just this. This is a, a Nike uh, pullover. It's a polyester. It's like a warm little like, um, a, just a warm pullover layer. It's pretty thick, but uh, it's really comfortable. And then once I start getting warm enough to take it off, then I'll just take it off and I'll, I'll hike in with the base layer. If it's cold enough out and you're comfortable wearing the couple layers and you're not sweating, then by all means wear it. I say wear as many layers as you can without sweating so that you could be as comfortable as possible. Uh, personally, I don't know, maybe it's just my hiking pace, maybe it's just me in general, but I'm generally very comfortable in just a base layer when I'm hiking nice and fast. Um, definitely dry. I pretty much don't really get wet sweating in the winter. I forgot to add about the legs. I mean, gaiters. Absolutely have to wear gaiters in the winter. Um, the gaiters are going to keep all the snow out of your boots. It's going to keep the water out of your boots. It's going to protect your lower legs. It's, these are essential. I mean, you can't, you just can't hike in the winter without, without these. I tried it once. That was my very first winter hike ever. And it was snowballs going down my boots, freezing, melting all over my socks, etc. It was just miserable. Have to wear gaiters. Totally essential. And it actually is going to add a ton of warmth to your lower leg too. Let's see. Gloves. I don't really like to start at the car with big warm gloves. I use these little touchscreen mitts. Um, these are by Outdoor Mountain Research or Outdoor Research. I forget. I, I always forget the name of these. But, you know, I just wear a thin layer. As is, is, is cold as I can possibly handle. Um, usually these are warm enough for most any start. Um, if those don't work and I get cold, then I'll switch to my good five finger gloves. These are Gore-Tex. These are super warm, insulated, comfortable. I like five fingers for regular climbing, regular hiking. Um, I like the mobility and I just like being able to use my fingers, especially for like videoing and, and all that stuff. Um, if this isn't warm enough, then I'll put on my, my, uh, my approach gloves and then I'll put them inside this. If that's still not warm enough, um, I have backup mittens, but um, typically when I'm approaching the summit, if my hands start getting cold and in all honesty, in almost every single hike that I've done, right before I get to a summit, if it's below zero, I'm going to open up some hand warmer packets. I'm going to stick them in my pocket, start getting them warm. And almost every time, I'll just put hand warmers inside my gloves just for the added security. Um, once the hand warmers are in my gloves, uh, my hands are going to be warm for like 10 hours. No matter what the temperature is outside, I'm going to have warm hands. So I definitely did not mention that on the gear video, but I have like four um packets of hand warmers like pairs so i have 40 hours of heat um i think hand warmers are definitely essential in the winter I, I use them on almost every winter ascent i just throw them in the gloves for the added security and they keep my hands really warm i have never ever had to break out my mittens so the five finger gloves with hand warmers inside has always been perfect for me um right before i get to the summit i slow down my pace a lot to start um avoiding sweating because this is where I'm going to want to layer up a lot because usually when you get to the summit you slow down you want to stand around you want to enjoy the views so um, I have my first base layer 
I'll put on my other base layer. This is a Nike Hyper Warm. Um, I think this is really such an amazing layer. I really love it. Um, so I'll have the two base layers on. Again, I'll put on my, my gym pullover. Uh, this is a really warm insulated uh, Nike pullover. And then I'll put on my Gore-Tex shell. This is North Face Flex GTS rain jacket. It's rainproof, waterproof, and it pretty much makes the outside world disappear. You don't feel any of the weather. You don't feel any of the wind. It pretty much just locks in all your heat and it doesn't let it out. Um, so I really love that. Now, if it's, if it's really cold and you need face gear, I don't like face masks that just pull up over your face that don't have vents in them. I've tried them. When it's really cold, the steam, Go, as it's going through the material, it, it freezes over. It becomes a block of ice in front of your face. And then you can't breathe through it no more. You, there's no more airflow. And then what does the airflow do? It goes up past your nose and across your goggles. When it goes across your goggles, it fogs them over and they frost. And then you can't see where you're going no more. So I really, I really like this type of mask where it has... Um, it has breathable vents. It has a nose cut out. It lets all my steam get away from my face so that absolutely nothing goes up and steams and fogs over my goggles. It was hands down the best decision I made by getting away from buffs or other types of face gear. Um, this just, it, it works flawlessly. Now, goggles. Goggles, another thing. Freezing cold in the summer. I mean, freezing cold in the winter. It gets so cold up there, guys. Like negative 30, negative 50, that freezes your eyes. Like that freezes your tears. So your tears will turn to ice almost instantly. If you get a good breeze in your eye, your eye is going to freeze. Like instantly. So you got to wear goggles to keep your eyes from freezing shut. Let's see what else I got. A hat. Obviously, I don't need to talk about a hat. You guys all know when you should wear a hat when your head's cold. Um, so let's see. What else? What other tips can I give you? Um, pretty much just... The bottom line is start at the car cold and warm yourself up. Don't start too warm and then just start sweating right away. Cotton kills, avoid cotton. Wear either polyester or wool, whichever you prefer. Um, I like to be really, really warm on my legs. It allows me to stay super light up top. And if I stay really light up top, then I'm going to stay dry where it matters. Um, with the insulated snow pants, I've stood on summits negative 50 for hours like waiting for sunrises or sunsets. I've never been cold. So I feel like that's almost as if it's a spend a night in the mountains layer. My legs are toasty. Um, if I did have to spend a night in the mountains, I also have a backup, a huge puffer that I would put under my Gore-Tex shell, you know, between all the hand warmers, I could put them in my boots, I could put them in my hands, my hat, you know, typically I don't hike alone in the winter. I, I, I think it's really dangerous, but if I do hike alone in the winter, I'm going to get an in-reach, a spot, like an emergency GPS so that I can alert someone if I'm in trouble. Um, so yeah, that's another thing. If you're hiking solo, have a way of getting help. Um, make sure you have an emergency contact. Make sure people know where you are, when you should be back, and you know, just always let someone know where you are. People have died out there in the mountains. They've, they've frozen to death, so it's not a joke. It's not to be taken lightly. A lot of these winter ascents... Um, they could be very dangerous. They can turn in the snap of a finger. You could be on an open summit like on Algonquin and a storm can blow over. I've seen it happen to some friends. A storm blew over. They got lost. They couldn't get off the summit. They had to call the DEC for help. They were, they were, it's a whiteout condition. Like these storms blow over. That's another reason why you don't ever drop your pack going to mountains. Um, say, say I want to drop my pack on the bottom of Algonquin, just run up to the, the summit and come back down. W what happens if you got up to the summit and then all of a sudden a bad storm blew over and now you're lost. You can't see, you don't have your gear, you don't have your backup stuff, you, you're, you're done. So always carry your gear with you. It's, it's having your safety gear with you at all times that's going to keep you safe. You know, the winter, it's, it is a playground if you treat it safely, but it can turn really bad and you can't really make any mistakes out there, guys. It's, it's really, really cold. I mean, most of the time in the high peaks, you're looking in negative temperatures. Um, this year has been really warm. It's been in like the 20s. It really hasn't gotten down too ridiculously cold on average, which is nice, but it's not always that way. It's usually in the negative temperatures. It's usually freezing and windy on these summits. Um, so yeah, oh, let's see, what else, what else? So I talked about starting cold, warming up, um, again, Hike as cold as you can comfortably, because um, the colder you are, the drier you're going to be. Um, I like wearing really light layers. I've seen people wear like hard shells, and every time I've hiked with someone wearing a hard shell, they're dripping profusely in sweat from their face. 
I wear a light little layer, I'm never dripping in sweat. I'm never wet. I mean, I might get a little moisture under like the backpack straps and like areas, but I'm generally very dry and comfortable. And once I get to the summit and I put on a Gore-Tex shell, my body is dry in 20 minutes. It pretty much always happens that way. Um, let's see. I don't want to miss anything for you guys. I'm just trying to think of all these little things. Um, yeah, I mean, really warm on the bottom means I can go really light on the top and stay dry. Um, when you get near the summit, layer up as warm as you want. Slow down your pace to avoid sweating. And, you know, you don't want to have to do it on the summit when you're too cold to move. Um, that is all I could think of at the moment. I hope this vlog was helpful. I hope I taught you guys something. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, I probably should have had a notepad in front of me so it wasn't uh, repetitive or I didn't miss anything, but I just tried to wing it. And yeah, I hope this vlog helped you guys out. I hope you might have learned something. If you want to teach me something, leave me a comment below. I, I love learning. You know, pretty much everything I've learned since the beginning was from very knowledgeable winter hikers who taught me everything that they know and it's worked flawlessly right from the start. So, you know, I hope, I hope, uh, I could help you guys out. And again, if you know of anything that might help me, please let me know. You know, someone messaged me on my gear video yesterday and said, you know, about the water filter. If you use it in the winter and it, it freezes after you use it, it'll crack the filter and you won't be able to use it. And he said, take water purification tablets. And I was like, why did I never think of that? I mean, I've never had to refill in the winter. I've always had my stove and I just figured I'd boil water, but he's right. Water purification tablets would be the way to go in the winter. So you don't have to carry the filter. You don't have to use the filter. You just throw in some purification tablets and you're good to go. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, cotton kills, polyester wool, and like I said, it's hard without a notepad to remember everything I wanted to talk about, but I hope I covered everything. So uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, over and out.